yesterday while I was rooting in a skip found this little beast a Clark woodworker wood turning lathe I've given it a bit of a clean up it's got a bit of surface rust on it it says 1992 didn't have a plug came out of I presume tool station uh, but maybe somewhere else where Clark tools are sold 65 quid I think it was a shop soiled model but I don't know didn't even plug it in, just thought I'll have a look in here, because I couldn't see in the window, you can't see anything either, couldn't see the uh, with the belt on. So I opened up the door, two screws to get me in, and uh, inside was this ratty old orange belt, obviously, completely useless, and the original manuals. And thought, well, let's peruse these, see what we've got here, because they're bound have a parts list that will tell me what I need. Number 43. No shit. I need a belt. <laughs> no part numbers or nothing. I thought about this and it's just been mulling it over overnight and I've taken it apart again and looked at it and put a plug on it because it didn't even have a plug. I suspect it was never ever used. Somebody saw it for 65 quid and thought, ooh, I'm a woodworker. That's the job for me. So they took it home and put it in the garage and then 1992, what are we in now? Almost 30 years later, 29 years later, almost as old as yours truly, they, someone else threw it in the skip, presumably not the person who had, had bought it. It's got a neat little uh, kind of a locking on off switch. It's got a capacitor motor. I'll show you the nameplate on the back as well. The rating plate. And there's a thing there for a capacitor value, but there's nothing on it. But a little single phase half horse motor. It's in it's in the back. You can't see it from the outside. It's missing a few things. It's missing an adjusting handle, but in fairness, an old screw with a well, an old bolt would do that. The motor's in there. It's quite dainty. Um you can hear whenever you turn it off, and I'll do that later if I get the belt going on it. You can hear when you turn it off the uh kind of telltale clunk of a pair of flyweights coming back out again to turn the capacitor on or off, ready for the next time. So I was thinking about it overnight, thinking where am I going to get a belt, how am I going to measure a belt, etc, etc, etc. I remembered that many years ago, I went to China. And when I was in China, I had all these great ideas about projects I had on the go. And so, while I was there, I bought some of this 6mm polyurethane Calsun belt. I remember it quite well, actually. I went into this place and it was like a little, little kind of indoor market for engineers things like dial gauges and belts and all this stuff and there's just stacks of stuff everywhere and I managed to you know I was speaking English and this guy didn't do English and everything was on calculators and you just type the price into the calculator and you got what you wanted I didn't really know what I wanted I knew I needed four mil five mil or six mil for a different lathe that is still in the loft in the house and has never been used by me a little um lorch or uh bowley style watchmaker's lathe run off its own machine motor but uh Anyways, it's still there, but I got this belting for it. It's got to be 10, at least 10 years old. Uh, sat in extreme heat, but uh, it's not cracking when I bend it over like that, so it'll probably do this job. And the idea is you cut this, and uh, then you put a dab of the old cyanoacrylate super sauce on it, and uh, Bob's your uncle. So, all I'm going to do is just wrap this around and uh, see if I can get the right length on the pulleys on the business end and uh, take it off, super glue it, pray, cross my fingers, put it back on and see if it works. We will see. So I've got two meters of this stuff and I certainly won't need that on the other one. So I'm going to try and do, the bearings are a bit stiff on that given that they haven't been used in 28 years. They're doing okay. Um, you can tension this a good bit and I think it's a bit um, so it's on the loose side, tight side, it's on the tight side now. So if I cut that a little bit shorter, if I cut it here and then cut a bit off each end to make it nice and sweet. Of course he hasn't got a chopping block. No, why would he do that? That'd just be a smart thing to do, wouldn't it? Let's just get a piece of scrap and obviously the bluntest Stanley blade that I can find. Big raggy edge. 
you can see that there. So I'm going to get a sharper knife. Just take the tiniest millimeter off that. I remember the first time I did this, my mind was just blown. Wait a minute. <laughs> There's a load of blades in here. This is where I keep all my used blades. <laughs> the new ones keep in a nice clean cupboard. All right. Mind blown. There you go. That's what's inside there. There should be a little bit of sponge to stop them rattling, but time, time gets the better of it. Put that back together. This is as sharp as it's going to get in this garage. Let's see. So many blades in at the back of the handle squizzed out. Right. The idea is you want the idea is you want one clean slice. What do you think, Henry? That looks better. The idea, of course, is that it should be completely square and perpendicular and all that other stuff, but well, we're in a garage. I didn't finish telling you my story anyways about this um this this uh this store that I was in in China. Let's get this glue out now. So I motioned to the guy that I wanted these kinds of belts, and he goes, Yeah, you want this one, yeah? And I was like, Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I want. Don't slide all away. That's what I want, yeah, absolutely. And he goes, but I, I didn't have the one that I wanted, so I wanted a bigger one, and I, you know, drew it for him on a little piece of paper and showed him what I was after. And he looks at it and goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he just goes, sit there, sit there. And he gave, he pulled a seat out from someone else's stall, gave it to me to sit on, on the side of his counter, and just says, just, you know, and he just says, pointed at his watch, five minutes, five minutes. And Buddy ran out the door, and I could see him hop on a bicycle and pedaled off down the street. Now, I remember Saturday Night Fever, because I've seen it, not because I was around when it came out, because that was... A couple of moons before my day. But John Travolta was in the paint shop, if I recall, or in the hardware store where he worked, and some old lady's coming in, rattling on about she wants this colour of paint, or something similar to that anyways. John Travolta and, and the, the guy in the store, John Travolta gets sent out to a different store to go and fetch the paint, because obviously they don't have it, and uh, comes back and pretends it was in stock all along, and they were just looking for it in the back of the shop. This guy didn't make any pretend like that kind of kind of thing he just tells me and he goes off and he gets it and he's probably charged me a 50% markup and that length of belt was probably still only a pound or some other pathetically small price that's been about a minute how long does super glue take to dry longer than that oh fuck you you bastard pu it's still it's still wet like if i rub it around right intermission it's probably tools you can get for doing this that have four thumbs to hold the belt and push it together but your man came back anyways with exactly what I wanted, at a price that was ideal, and I got what I wanted, and he got the money. I've got a tale to tell. I told everybody that story when I came back from China. I thought I was amazed. I thought that was, you know, the kind of service you're never going to get chasing around somewhere in Dublin. Just ain't going to happen. Is this tight? I don't know. Feels twisty without Shiri. No, it's not there yet. What am I what am I doing wrong here? Right. Let's put a dab of rubbing alcohol on it, because I don't know what was in that other Loctite bottle. And uh this one's still Loctite. This one's called super glue. They're both called super glue. Hopefully this one will do better. You dare touch it with your finger? Not a hope. Just give it a bit of a rub with that tissue, so that'll leave tissue crumbs all over it, you know, to act as a bonding agent. Um yeah. Yeah, it's really copped it over. Right, take another slice off it. I remember seeing a guy at the ploughing match in Ireland once selling some kind of wonder glue. And how he was doing it was he had a belt that he was getting the strongest man in the room to test. See if he could pull it apart. And the belt was obviously cut a thousand times. But you see, what your man did was he just cut the belt once. So the belt was a whole belt made out of bits. He'd cut it. So obviously the mating surfaces are perfect for one another. Now this guy had been used before, but the idea is that they're all one shot. Oh, there's a drip on it. Oh, my finger's gone. Oh, come back to me. Little drop on there. Tappy tap tap. Get across onto the other surface. Try not to squeeze with my other hand. Don't know what I'm doing. I hate super glue. But when it works, it works really, really well. So he, he would cut the belt. Offered up to the strongest man in the room, who is obviously every man in the room who happens to be present, who reckons he can get. There was no prize, you know, it wasn't, it was just a, that whole thing of, oh, show your girlfriend how strong, I can't do this at all, for fuck's sakes. Come on, buddy. 
I don't want to put a twist in it really. I've cut those off little cockways. There's too much juice on that, I'd say. It's going to do the same thing again. I don't think it's going to stick PU for some reason, polyurethane. Right, I'm just going to have to talk to you for 20 minutes until I've kind of lost all sensation in my hands. This is kind of punishment the Christian brothers would have given you. Fixing belts. So I had this belt and it was cut a hundred times, completely, well, like, cockways put back together. He, he didn't, I didn't do any effort to marry it up. But it was, just, it was he gave it to me, because, you know, someone had to. And, uh, bang, it comes straight apart. <laughs> so he trims it again. This time wonky, because he's cut out the bit that he had glued previously. The good, clean cut bit. And, uh, yeah, no, I couldn't, couldn't break it that time. How was that? Do you think it's done? No, of course it's not done. What are we doing wrong here? And meanwhile, I'm going to read the internet, find out that that was wrong, make the belt even shorter, and then join you in a moment. It's going to stick to the bench now. You probably, if you want, put a bird mouth cut in it or any of that stuff. The other option, of course, is drill a hole in it and stitch it. So after all that... Polyurethane is not the man for the job. So get the rustiest old knife you can find. Oh. Speed it up. Might be enough. Let's see. Yeah, that'll do her. marry those up and it leaves a big bulge in it so I'm gonna to have to figure out what to do with that focus for god's sakes come on I'm still gonna to have to hold it like a lemon until it cools off maybe I could run it under a tap now you could of course just use a cigarette lighter which I presume works fine I could try blowing on it <sighs> yeah so it turns out super glue is not the man for the job heat is now if you can see on the bench you can see one of them but there's at least eight little slices of belt here because I wasted a load on the super glue then I tried heating it with uh, the flame directly that didn't really do it so I just used a hot knife that way. There's a guy on YouTube does it with a pair of V-blocks and heats them and then slides the knife out and then pushes the V-blocks together that he's clamped the belt into along a straight edge. You know wonderful little operation he's got going there. When's this done? It's getting harder. Wonderful little operation, and uh, the V-blocks are about a metre away from me, so didn't really fancy getting them out. And I'm pretty sure they may not be the same height, so I'd have to build a little shim to shim up the V-block. feels like it's stronger now. I'm kind of, I've lost the feeling in the finger, so now I can't because I've gone onto my second finger to touch it like this. Now I don't know if it's if it's okay or not to try and hold it that way. Is it okay? I'll just hold it a bit longer. I'm not sure do you trim off the crud on the outside or maybe I'll just leave it and see if that seems like it's holding. You know, his video was a minute long, but you come here for the stories, I guess. Got a bit of smoke on it there from that, uh, or blackening from when it went on fire. Right, I'll leave it cool down a bit. It's been a while. Feels pretty good, you know. Um, should I trim this off? This big nub? I don't know is the short answer, but uh, let's use the knife towards my hand. That's safer. Otherwise, it's going to go clunk, 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 clunk as it goes around. Of course, I could test that first, couldn't I? Yeah, I could. Right, oh, there's a bubble in that one. My logic is that if there's no bump on it, it'll stress it less. Of course, where the bump is, there's more surface area, not surface area, cross-sectional area to be stressed. So it's a bit of a swings and roundabouts on this one. A bit better, perhaps? A little bit better? Feels good. So, loosen this off. It's a 12 mil nut for some bizarre reason. Oh, there. No, that's no good. Turn the thing up this way. Because I've lost that handle, or well, it didn't come with it. Can push the motor up from below. Like that. 
Put this on big to little, that'll give it its fastest spinning spin. Do it like that, then it's on. Then put tension on like that. I don't know how much you want, really. A bit more. Until it stops slipping, I guess. Settle this. Tighten that. I don't know why it has the tensioner on the front. I guess maybe you're meant to leave these loose the whole time and not tighten them, but it seems a bit... Well, you have to take the belt... Yeah, I don't know why the tensioner knob is kind of always there. I don't, I don't get that. What do you think? Will it do? Right. Up, around. Watch your head, buddy. Okay, let's plug it in. Clark Woodworker, and... Looks a little bit... Looks okay, you know. I wonder with that slip, or is that enough? Um, don't know. Guess we'll find out. Now, if someone paid 65 quid for that, what's it worth today? I have no idea how much these things go for. It could be that they're cheaper now than they ever were. It's just two pieces of box section, a bit of folded section. Just two flange bearings on it, but they're they're pretty chintzy ones inside. It should have a faceplate, but I have a feeling because of this clearance thing, it was a shop soiled, shop soiled missing parts model um, with the stuff, the manual and all shoved in there. But yeah, anyways, free repair. Questions or comments? or extreme corrections, leave them below. Thanks for watching, see you later.